Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Austin Yorsky and Johnny Maloney. Before we begin, okay, I'd like to take an opportunity to apologize. All right. Because uh, during the course of recording this episode of Word Funk, you may hear what sounds like one Transformer very slowly humping another Transformer. <laughs> I was going to ask, uh, you sound bad this week. Yeah, um, well, you see, uh, the problem that I'm having is that um, right across the street from me, <clears throat> there's a work crew currently demolishing a building that apparently doesn't have an understanding of clocks. Mm. I mean, uh, perhaps maybe I'm I'm being a little bit cruel here because maybe they have a perfectly reasonable understanding of clocks, but just not the social implications of like when is the right time to do something like knock down a building. Like if I were to ask you, Leon, uh, I mean, you're a relatively well-mannered man. I feel like you've got a handle on uh, um, <clears throat> most social niceties. Well, most. If I was going to say, Leon... Do you think it's a reasonable time to knock down a building in a residential area at 5 o'clock in the morning? No, that's like the worst time, because that's when you're trying to get those last couple hours of sleep. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a a reasonable thing to maybe not want to knock down a building at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, I've discovered this knowledge is not universal. Moreover than that, Dinner hour, apparently, is not off the table either. So, so yeah, just... you, might, you might hear some, some slow-mo Transformer erotica in the background. Uh... <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll end now that it's like six. Maybe the, like, the proverbial whistle will blow, and they'll be like, no more Transformer humping, guys. Mm. Time, time to go home and get the squishy, fleshy kind. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. So, guys. <laughs> yeah. Do you see that fucking Super Bowl? <laughs> no, I saw one commercial because it's related to me. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to, as part of it, that's what I wanted to bring up. Let's just get this out of the way. Broncos won, so you both you both owe me your, your immortal souls. That was the deal. Okay. Okay. The other thing uh, is <laughs> Seal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like last week uh, on Word Funk, uh, Austin wanted to talk about football, and I planned to drown him out with an instrumental version of Kiss from a Rose, our favorite song. But it wasn't that too successful. I tr- I, I basically made sure it didn't drown him out on the recording. Um, but anyway. Just during... enough to sound bad. <laughs> yeah, on, on the Super Bowl, uh, there was a commercial, apparently. Someone told me on Twitter, and I watched it. And it was a bunch of children talking about how their parents fucked during the Super Bowl. (laughs) And you know what? Uh, If the if the the whole uh, commercial had just been Seal singing about this, I'd be like, that is the best commercial ever. But instead, it was a bunch of children who couldn't sing. I couldn't understand any of the lyrics. I was told later that that's what it was about, but I couldn't understand what they were talking about because they didn't sound like Seal. So, in in fairness, very few people do. That's true, but y- you know you need to be at least ten percent of like seal level singing if you're going to try to do that. But they were like two. Uh, <laughs> That's so... what we call the seal threshold. It's, a, yeah. it's an important benchmark in singing. It actually, is. the whole uh, our parents fucked during the Super Bowl was actually an, like a motif of those commercials. There was like ten of them. Oh. They kept they kept bringing it up. It was a theme. But yeah, I won't bore you guys with Super Bowl like recap or anything, but it was quite an event for a number of reasons. Uh Peyton Manning went just full on shill master. Like he he brought Papa John out on the field and like they asked him, like, are you gonna retire after winning the big game? And he's like, Listen, Budweiser, 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 Budweiser. Like he basically became a Pokemon who could only say its name, and its name was Budweiser, and it was really shameful. I read an article that said he got millions of dollars for that, which is actually more than his bonus for wing- winning the game. So I'm not saying I'm excusing this commercialism, but I am saying I get it. Yeah, like you got to stack that paper. I feel you, dog. <laughs> but the whole thing is that the the NFL is a multi billion like conglomerate thing that files taxes as a non profit, and so the fucking people who are putting their bodies on the line out there have to to basically sell out. Yeah, uh, I mean, if it's, Austin, 
Yes. Uh, could you put some like some soft, soothing, gooey, sticky lotion on me here and tell me, uh, did we get anything resembling a left shark too? Okay, yeah, let's talk about the halftime show because it was billed as Coldplay and Friends, <laughs> but uh, Coldplay got raffle stomped. They got showed up. It was I've heard like every burn in the book basically, but I let's just add to them here. They were the opening act for Bruno Mars and Beyonce, who fucking slayed it. They burned that building down with everyone inside. It was actually super good. Um, and I said at the time that I think it was pretty clear that Bruno and Beyonce are way more talented, and Coldplay was just there because otherwise white people would have been uncomfortable. I feel like that's a hard sell. A hundred million Americans watch the Super Bowl, guys. That's a lot of white people. And if you make them sit there and listen to hip hop uh, for half an hour, they're gonna they're gonna be uncomfortable. And I feel like someone uh, who was producing this thing realized that, so they brought Coldplay out. They played mostly new stuff like. Listen, I, I ride or die for the first two Coldplay albums. I will fight anyone. Parachutes and Russian Blood to the Head are masterpieces. I think they played a little bit of Clocks, and the rest of it was all their new garbage. And then Beyonce came out in there and just flattened him. Basically curb stomped Chris Martin in front of his friends and family. It was like a Mortal Kombat fatality. Okay. Oh. The best show in a while. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a better one. I can't like they've been pretty bad over the years, but that was a good ass show. Super Bowl was good too. It was very defensive, which some people don't like. I, I'm a as a person who played defense, I appreciate the art of the game, but it wasn't like a high scoring shootout that some people prefer. I liked it. I don't care for Coldplay myself. <sighs> yeah, what's the band that you think they're a pale imitation of? <clears throat> oh no, no, they're not a pale imitation. No, no. The the band Houses is the band that I always wanted Coldplay to be. Okay. They are pretty pale, though. I mean, <laughs> well, they're British, so there's only so much you can right. do. Um, now, like, H- H- Houses' last album, which I think is called A Quiet Darkness, is a concept album about a husband and wife who are, like, stranded up on, like, opposite sides of California from each other when a nuclear bomb goes off. And the songs are, like, about them kind of, like, slowly working their way towards each other again. It's a really nice album in a very dark and weird way. Okay. Johnny, I, I, I appreciate your taste in music, so I'm going to look them up and check them out later. <laughs> uh, usually the stuff that you recommend is good, and the stuff that Austin does is not. <laughs> that's you know what you guys have different uh tastes and i can respect that but like i was here's a thing i was trying to listen to neutral milk hotel yeah because i know it's a band maybe the only band that leon likes yeah. and also uh april ludgate in parks and rec <laughs> really likes them yeah. so i was like okay two of my favorite people yeah. i have to give this a try and like i i i can see it like oh like yeah it's interesting but it's like I wouldn't seek it out you know what I'm saying it's like I'm glad I had the experience did, but it's not did going you listen on my did you did you listen to the whole album as as like a single work because especially in an airplane over the sea it kind of needs to be digested as a complete piece yeah. mm, no I don't think I did I should do that then yeah what what, what, what I did would you I would recommend to? that you do that absolutely what did you listen to I t- I typed neutral milk hotel into the internet radio thing. I think it's like the Google oh, Austin, internet radio. Oh, Austin, what's the matter with you? <laughs> I don't know. It just it just plays like a mix of stuff. I didn't know it was a concept album. Yeah, but I, no, I'm trying to ask what tracks did you listen to? Oh, I don't know. I just had it on in, like during a walk. <laughs> don't Leon, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll sort him out. It'll be okay. Right. Next week he'll come around singing a different tune. Probably Two-Headed Boy Part 1 or 2. So... Yeah. yeah, I have such garbage musical taste, guys. It's... I, I never said that, Austin. You and I, you and I have many intersecting tastes when it comes to music. I, I, I said nothing of the sort. I don't speak, don't speak for me, young man. Why you should think better of your elders. All right. Um. So I don't. We didn't discuss any topics we were going to talk about this week. As is. Yeah, as I, is I think it was a foregone. It's a foregone conclusion, though. There's one topic. Okay. Um, and my uh, pants are getting tight just thinking about it. Uh, what? <laughs> that means I have a bone. No, I understand what it implied. Uh, what I tried to say is, what? What is? What is the topic we're talking about? Ryan. Ryan oh, right. Yeah, the thing I I recommended day, a couple days ago, and I forgot about. Um, yeah. <laughs> recommended it yesterday. Yeah, I'm sorry. Look, look. I I just got off work. Leave me alone. 
So, um, yeah, le- ladies and gentlemen, uh, we were all a little um, apprehensive about what this new Star Trek was going to be because we don't know anything about it. We know something about it now, and that is the guy who was the showrunner for Hannibal and other shows will be uh, the show. Other shows that I yeah love. will be the showrunner for the new Star Trek series. We don't know anything else besides that, but I feel like as that is the first tidbit of information, that's a pretty good tidbit. I think I think I'm gonna throw a wang dang doodle. <laughs> you can't just say shit, Johnny. I don't know what you're saying, but I will say this. That's it's an old it's an old famous it's it's a famous blues song. Okay. Thank you. If you say so. Right. No, it's if you Google <laughs> Wang Dang Doodle, the first thing that fucking shows Lusty. up No, I'm just <laughs> The, like the very if you don't even have to go into videos if you Google Wang Dang Doodle the first thing that shows up is a YouTube video of the Howlin' Wolf song Wang Dang Doodle well, not, although he, it, Johnny I'm not saying that you're lying I'm just saying I don't care it's too completely different. it's entirely different uh, hey can, can you say Wang Dang Doodle one more time I think I can say Wang Dang Doodle one more time okay thank you um, so Brian Fuller guys that's pretty awesome. I feel like we're we're in a really great era of nerd shit right now. Like Ryan Johnson's directing the next Star Wars. We got Brian Fuller on Star Trek. We have like a bunch of fucking Kenneth Branagh on those Marvel movies. Like, how did we get here? This is really good. Fun fun fact, actually. Did you know that like one of Brian Fuller's first Hollywood gigs or like, you know, movie gigs was actually writing for star trek yeah i I didn't realize that until it it said so in the article but yeah he did some uh deep space nine and a voyager stuff yep i'm pretty happy about this which is which is awesome yeah i have more star trek things to say but it's part of the questions portion of this show so i'm gonna Mm. save it okay yeah we have questions for days i just think it's it's like I wasn't sold on Star Trek because I don't have any like affinity for it, but it, I watched Brian Fuller direct like, you know, paint drying. So I'm in. All right. I hear. I heard, I would. Was that? I would watch Brian Fuller. I would watch Brian Fuller direct slow motion Transformer porn. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would get up at five o'clock in the morning and stand on my balcony to do it too. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Um, we, we still don't know anything about cast or even what universe this will be taking place in, but I feel like, uh, we can all kind of breathe a sigh of relief that this might not suck. So I'm excited. Does it matter though? Is it like, could they, is there a universe they could set it in or a cast they could cast where you're like, no, I'm out. No, no, I'm definitely interested no matter what, but I do have like, uh, preferences. My preference would be a very diverse cast. My preference would also be in the original universe and not the new movie uh, universe. Um, If it is, look, I will still watch it if it takes place in the new universe and everyone is as white as Coldplay. But I, you know, I won't be as jazzed. So I want a diverse uh, cast, both racially and uh, in terms of sexual orientation. I feel like it's time for that. But, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right now, I'm just, I'm just, I'm taking this one piece of news and I'm saying good. Yeah, I feel like we're we. <laughs> do you guys hear that fucking oh, train yeah. that just went oh, by? That's, that's not me. That's not me. No, that's not me. no that no I'll, train is mine. No, that's not me, yeah. I will I will admit to the transformer humping, but I mean one of them yelling at orgasm like that. I'm just not ready to cut. Austin, to. Austin do, you, do you do you live on train tracks? I mean near train. No, I... We've we've done like I know I, of the show. I know we we've been podcasting for a long time and I've never heard trains. I live near trains, uh, but I didn't know you did. What's going on in in Florida? What's what's? I'm not actually. I, I mean, there are train tracks in Tallahassee. I'm not particularly near them, but I just feel, I think you know wherever they are, they're having a conniption fit right now. Maybe something happened. Maybe an alligator ran over the tracks. They're trying to scare it off. Oh, I, maybe a couple of Randy Transformers. I I have a I have a related story to uh something I found in the road uh earlier this evening. Is this another Gatorade story? No. Um it's not as gross, but it's ten times scarier. Now before I tell you what I found and really had to swerve to get it out of the way of in the road, I'm gonna let you guess because I feel like there's nothing you could say that could be as terrifying in implication as what I found. Okay, I, 
before I guess, I just want to like I, I just want to set the scene here because you say that you you found it, but then also that you but, right, but by finding, I don't mean I like uncovered it. I mean like I saw it. Like I, it was night and like an hour ago, and the, there it was, and I swerved to get out of the way and went on my merry way. Um. So what was it? Donald Trump eating a baby. It was not. It was something that actually could happen. <laughs> Are you going to sit there in your liar's chair and tell me that couldn't happen? Uh, hmm. Johnny? Um, hmm. <clears throat> I want to say... I want to say... <laughs> if if uh, Leanne's probably going to edit out... An, un- <laughs> an unusually large box of used diapers. Oh my god. <laughs> Leanne's probably going <laughs> to... Here's here's the thing. You're both not far off. Johnny, uh Austin, you're you're closest without going over. Um <laughs> this it's not funny though, it's just frightening. I want to set the scene. It's completely dark, and what I saw was a double baby stroller very slowly crawling across the road. Empty. There is no reason for that to have happened, unless Someone was taking their babies across the street. What kind of what kind of neighborhood was this? Was this like a rural road? This are we are we? This was not the city. This was like the bad part of outside Baltimore. So some the point I'm trying to say is something bad happened. And when I say it's empty, I'm only guessing because I didn't stop. So. Wait, you could have left a baby unattended no, in the no, middle of the street? No, uh, or two yeah, babies. Or, or two, two babies. babies. Look, I don't know for sure what was or what was not in that b- double baby stroller, but I know that I had shit to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, Leon. That, that story started dark, and it's just gone, like, black hole of an horizon. I'm telling you. I know. I'm almost... Maybe it was, maybe it was bait, Austin. <laughs> For uh, Donald Trump seeking new flesh to feast upon. In all seriousness, and he was he was hoping that a car would stop and someone would be like, "Oh my God, the babies!" and then just like pounce upon them. Here's here's the, the actual possible scenarios here. Someone was strolling, taking their babies out for a stroll at night for some reason, and was and the bag man and was the bag man got their parents and dragged them off to crime house right, and was kidnapped. And also the babies were kidnapped. Or there was a completely irresponsible child taking two babies out, realized that they didn't want to do that, left two babies in the stroller, and then left. Or the only... See, I'm trying to think of like a reasonable explanation for this to happen that isn't about something terrible. Or... Or the baby stroller was left by the side of the road because it was no good anymore and somebody didn't want to, like, pay to send it to the dump. So they were just like, I'm going to just dump it somewhere. I think no one's going to use it. Mm, yeah, my are more fun. So let's... <laughs> you just said you were looking for sensible explanations, and here I am just <laughs> dropping the veneer of imagination for you to be like, Leon, it was probably nothing, and you're like, nah, fuck you, Johnny. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, um, that happened to me today. Um, what else happened to me? Oh, oh, uh, on Monday, uh, this isn't interesting to anyone but me. Um, someone called me Big Homie, and it really made my day. I gotta tell you, it really made me feel good that he called me Big Homie. Uh, it wasn't like a friend of mine who was like, hey, Big Homie. It was a complete stranger. And it made me feel good inside. When he said it, I was like, really? Me? A big homie? And it was great. By the way, I want to mention something. I'm not that big. <laughs> yeah, but you might be a big homie. I, I might be. The thing is, I'm I'm like six feet tall, which is not small, but it's not that big. I'm like 199 pounds, which is not super thin, but, you know, I, I, I wear a medium shirt, so I'm not big there either. Um... So I can only assume he meant my spirit, which made me feel good about myself. 
you have the spirit of a homie. No, I, I have a big. I have a spirit of a big homie. I mean, we're all homies. Get get your homie nomenclature right, Austin. Yeah. Well, the thing, well, um, in my mind, I felt really good about it, but I didn't want to be too eager. So I just, <laughs> so I just said, sure. By the way, what precipitated this was I held the door for him, and he was very happy about it. Um, and that is my story. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this in is... fairness, in fairness, that's pretty big of you, Leon. <laughs> I feel like uh, when you get compliments or like offhand comments from people with slightly different um, dialects than you, they seem to mean more. With like like old, like Southern grandmas call you like sugar, you know, and you're like, oh, that's sweet. So yeah, I somebody know, if you if you're not used grandma. to oh. if you're <laughs> if you're not used to call people calling you homie and you get a you get a random homie, you're like, yeah, I do feel homie right now. Thanks, thanks, dog. Like, I wouldn't have cared if he called me homie. He called me big homie. Well, he took it to the next level. He really yeah. did. I mean, he he poured it on, and it it really warmed my heart. So thank you, guy. Uh, I'll never see you again. Uh, I was happy to hold the door open for you. Uh, I you didn't even have to say that, but since you did, I will always hold the door open for someone. Partly because I feel like it's the right thing to do, but also because someone will call me something really cute. Give more cute compliments, everyone. Oh my god. Just go out there and do yeah. it. Yeah, oh my god. If someone called me sugar, I would love that. That would be great. But people don't typically call me You're a real You're a real cuddle puddle, Austin. <laughs> I mentioned on Twitter a little while ago that I just want someone to call me cinnamon bun at some point in my life, but they ruined it by calling me cinnamon bun on Twitter. It's like no, you can't that, that's not what I mean. I mean I mean I want someone to genuinely mean it. And not do it after I say it. When you're knuckle deep in them. (laughs) Okay. It's just like I've always wanted to say sucka MCs. But I mean I can say it. But there's never been a a, a moment in which I could say it that would make sense. (laughs) You're waiting for the proper context. Right. I could could manufacture one. But that's not the same thing is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, so what did you guys do this week besides, you know, uh, watch the Super Bowl? Because I feel like I talked about my shit a bit. Hey, you know, personal crises. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and I played some board games. Neat. Okay, let's talk about that instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take option B. What board game? Um, what a... A couple, actually. I, I got in. I got in a session of um, Battlestar Galactica, which was one of my family's favorites. Which may tell you something about my family if you've ever played Battlestar Galactica. Um, I also finally got around to playing the Firefly board game um, that I have, which was better than I thought it was going to be, to tell you the truth. Um, lots of like flying around, making deals, misbehaving, trying to like did, you know. Did Baldwin say any bullshit MRA junk? Um, I don't think he was on anybody's crew at the time. I don't think anybody hired him, so he didn't even get a chance to open his mouth. Okay, um, good. I have not. I have not had a chance to open up my copy of Dead of Winter yet, but that doesn't mean anything to either of you, gentlemen. Um, but later this month, my buddy Jordan's having a birthday soiree, and hopefully, we'll get a chance to try it then. Neat. I also. Never mind. <laughs> you also what? No, nothing. I just like I can't really talk about board games to you guys because it's just me sort of like ta- it's like me standing in a corner talking to myself oh. and just being like, man, I've been really interested in getting a copy of Pandemic Legacy. Well, what's Pandemic Legacy, John? Well, it's funny you should ask that, John. Actually, Pandemic, which is one of my favorite cooperative games ever. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's like when it's like when I try to talk about Gundam. Yeah, yeah, I shit all over that. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Austin, do you have any non-Gundam things you would like to say? So you're not going to let me talk about the new X-Files episode, so I guess we'll just jettison that topic. We can't. Uh, I know, I'm sorry. At least like eight months. Austin, Uh, if you could could describe them in one word, one non-spoilery word, is that okay, Leon? Yeah. You know, if I may beg the court, what word would you use, Austin? Uh, I would probably go with oof. Or may- mm, I've been hearing a lot of that, actually. <laughs> or maybe, woof. 
How about how about ouch? Yeah, that's a good one too. Basically, any onomatopoeia which ends in a like a long trailing off part. Um, for, but I, I'll we'll skip past that. I also how would play... you how would you onomatopoeize? I don't even I whatever it is. It's a word now. Um, the sound when a balloon deflates rapidly and noisily. How? Well, I mean, you want me to make would, would that, that noise? Like, would that be like? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's basically it. If you want to anthropomorphize, anthropomorphize it, it'd be like, oh, it's kind of. All kind right. Of... So now that we've talked about the new X Files, yeah. <laughs> I mean that hits it. That's all I wanted to say, okay. really. Um, I also played some video games, specifically the DLC expansions to The Witcher Three and Dragon Age Inquisition. And I think I've talked about here um, before that I'm not like big into DLC. I don't think many companies know how to do it right with the few exceptions. I think Bioware, Nintendo, uh, CD Projekt Red are really the only people I trust. And wow, Bethesda they really... is ca- Bethesda's kind of hit and miss. I mean, they've had some really, really good ones. And then, you know, the next one, they're like, build a house. And you're like, I could do that with a mod. Mm, yeah. I mean, even though best ones aren't always hits, like I, I mean, Nintendo's definitely made missteps here and there. Um, but I think they really knocked these ones out of the park. I don't. You did? Did you finish Witcher Three, Johnny? I have not, um, because every Witcher game that ever comes out, I always put down, and I'm like, eh, I'll pick it back up again once the DLC comes out. Mm-hmm. And never again uh, have I met with those games. So <laughs> wait, so I you've was, never I, finished any Witcher? I, no, no, no. I finished the first Witcher and I finished the second Witcher, but I never went back because the first Witcher didn't really have DLC. It just they re-released it as the director's cut, and that's when I picked it up. Um, so I, I played the complete version of The Witcher One, uh, but then when The Witcher Two came out, I snapped it up and played it right away. A because uh, I liked The Witcher One quite a lot, and B I was reviewing it for Blistered Thumbs at the time, so it was like got to get this done. Um, and they had like lofty ideas about free stuff that they were going to release and expansion packs. And true to their word, they redeveloped The Witcher 2 intensely. Um, I never went back and played any of that content because mm. just too much shit to do. And that's a long commitment of time. Uh, so I, this time around, like The Witcher 3 came out and I started playing it. I got about like seven hours in or something like that. And I was like, wait a minute. I've fallen into this trap before. (laughs) So, uh, because I had bought the collector's edition that came with, like, I think the season pass connected to it or something like that. And anyways, uh, I was like, I'm going to get these things, and I know I'm not going to pick it up in the future to play it if I finish it now. So I'm waiting until their their last expansion comes at the, uh, I think it's at the end of this month, actually, that it drops. And then I'm going to dig my teeth back into it and come away with significant chunks of flesh. So, I mean, you hit upon the big issue, which is time. But I think both Witcher 3 and Dragon Age Inquisition are good games stretched far beyond what they can, like, sustain. Like, they're they're good. They're not quite 60, 70 hours good, which is what they require mm. to get all the content out. And I think what both yeah. – expansions do is deliver the best parts of the experience in a tighter package five six seven hours you know depending on how fast you play it and i feel that's that's greatly to their benefit i think you get all the the humor and the fun character interaction in trespasser which is the dragon age stuff and i think in the witcher three hearts of stone you get all Uh somebody saw the transform or something storytelling yeah it's it's pretty crazy Uh, tighter Tighter gameplay experiences are are becoming increasingly important to me as my life gets l- more and more complicated. You know, like <laughs> he he says in the middle of a police robot raid. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody drags me away at this point in time, if you hear like the door get blown open and then my voice disappears, um, you know, just go on without me. Um, but it's we'll, it's we'll true. We'll bail you out of the Septicon jail. Yeah, yeah. I would appreciate that. But it's, yeah, having more focus, because one of the things that I think that that gaming largely has ignored is that editing is such an important process to any work of art. Yeah, like Um, if you you wrote a book of most games, half of it would get cut. Like, you wouldn't have seven chapters of like, and then Geralt cut up the drowners, and then he cut up some more drowners, and then he killed more drowners, and then he got on his horse. Like, that would all be left out. 
Yeah, and and it it you know we we've talked in past too in in old episodes about you know the dissonance between the narrative that the game is trying to play and then what actually happens as you play it. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Four, I think, was a big one that we we spoke about in past about how it paints this picture of this guy who comes to America because he wants to go straight and he's sick of killing. And then as soon as the player gets a hold of him, it's grenades and rocket launchers everywhere. You know, like there's it, 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 it's, it's not consistent, and I think that tighter experiences are much dearer to my heart than uh, the sort of like wide sprawling. Oh well, you have to be able to do everything, mm-hmm. kind of games. Yeah, and I think it just it makes the stories better. Like the whole story of Witcher Three is like I gotta find Siri, and it's like Siri's badass but it takes you know forever to get to that point and it's like by the time you get the first clue in the main story you could have finished hearts of stone it's just uh it's just much more satisfying immediately i feel not not to say that the the base game is bad i liked it a lot it was one of my top 10 games of the year it's just uh i i really dig the direction dlc is going and i think companies are finally uh figuring out how to make it satisfying at a reasonable price uh and hopefully i won't be such a such a jerk about it man i, I want to like dlc it's a good idea leon yo how do you feel about the dlc i i, I don't care um <laughs> yeah we talked we talked about western thought, rpgs so. he started he just took a hammer to his computer as soon as we started talking about no it's okay it. no no my my feeling is dlc is cool you know by all means you know have expansion packs of games in in tiny bites if you want that's that's i totally get that uh and would endorse it if if i wanted to do that you know like as a concept i like it but in practice i don't because when i'm done playing a game I'm just done and I need to move on to something else because I once the credits roll, I'm like, yeah, I could be doing other things with my life. And then I do. Um, I don't know if I. But, but that's what I'm saying. These are these aren't that like like what DLC used to be is like, oh, you hear some costumes right. and stuff. No. And it's like, that's late. No one gives a shit. Hearts of Stone is like an entire game. Right condensed down it's a whole new thing like it it doesn't even need to be part of this other thing no i understand like if something's basically um a standalone thing or an expansion pack that massively expands a game that i love then i would consider playing it but i don't play games like that i guess i guess yeah. technically uh tales of graces f was <laughs> had a, had an expansion pack to it uh sort of like built in so i guess that's the closest i come to that I can't actually remember actually buying DLC. Wait a minute, that's not entirely true. When I bought uh, Saints Row the Third, uh, I bought it with like everything in it because it was on sale. So I guess that kind as of... it sh- as it should have happened though. I yeah. mean, because it was it was kind of short. Otherwise, um, yeah. So um, that's how I feel. I'm not like the guy to talk to about this sort of thing. And I will talk to you about it regardless. I know. I know you. Will. It- that's why we have a podcast together because we're so bad at talking. Right. Um, we thought this through. Yeah. Would you go to, would you, do you want to go to questions now? I have a ton. Um, I'll just mention one other thing. I'm learning to speak French. Uh, I started. We oh, yeah. <laughs> started this week. Uh, so I, I'm happy about that. I'm learning. Omelet du fromage. <laughs> Comment ça va, Leon? I, I, I'm learning a lot of words like je. croissant. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Never mind. That's what I'm learning. I'm going I'm going to a website called Memorize that uh, tells me how to do this. Uh, I I do it for five minutes a day, which is not a lot, but I'm doing well. I I, I ace all the quizzes that they give. So, you, so you're like, ooh, I love bibliotech. <laughs> He just asked you where the library is, Leon. Are you gonna are you gonna answer? Let's do, and we, and we. This, this was a mistake. Let's do questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach you to open up to us about your life. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be a better person, but fuck it. Uh Austin, uh tell me give me give me some questions. Okay. You don't want you, I talked about stuff for a while. Are you sure you don't want to take it? Nope. <sighs> <laughs> Leon. Bad moon now. Uh, go ahead. Oh. I'm kidding. We're just you're okay. Sit <laughs> on. 
Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Um, so we've answered this one before, but I think it was like 90 episodes again. It couldn't hurt to say this real quick. It's a short one. Uh, Marcus Levin asks, who came up, who came up with the name word funk and how uh, it happened like this? We were coming up with a lot of names for the show. Uh, most of them were ridiculous. Uh, Johnny came up with word jazz and then uh, right before on account on account of how improvised um, our, our format for the show was going to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then um, like five minutes before the start of the first episode, he says, hey, there actually is already a podcast called Word Jazz. And I said, well, what about wait, did I say it? I think I said, what about word funk? And then Johnny was not. Johnny was hesitant about this, and I, if you listen to the first episode, he was still saying, like, I don't know about this title towards the end, <laughs> but, but we stuck with it, and then I said, stay funky, and then uh, Johnny and Austin said that was terrible, and then that became the show, and that's it. Yeah, that's pretty so, much that's pretty much all you need to, like, to have me in on something is if it's terrible enough, I'm like, yeah, let's do yeah. it. That explains so much about our internet careers. Yeah. All right. Well, mine is terrible. That's kind of why I do it. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Alexander Arts asks, One Up was cool. I love the BT podcast and shows on game trailers. Why must all the silly, fun gaming sites be shut down? That's a thing that happened recently. Do you guys hear game trailers yeah. got shut down? Yeah, game trailers going down. I heard about that, but I don't go to the game trailers, so I only kind of know what was the deal. But uh, yeah, I did hear it. It's gone. I mean, the short answer to this question is money. Yeah, I mean, that's, you... that's the, really the answer to almost any business uh, shutting down, you know. Do you want the long answer, though? Because there's a longer answer. No. Oh, I know there is. Not really, but if you, if okay. you want to, I mean, I, <laughs> I won't kick you from the call. I mean, I retweeted an article that Jim Sterling wrote about it, which hit it on the nail, like hit the nail on oh, pretty hard. Bang on, bang on. I, yeah, I read the same article. Which is basically that it's very hard to be successful on the internet. And even if you are, it sometimes doesn't matter because it's not enough to be successful. You have to be increasingly successful despite all odds forever. And uh, not, not just that, but also like it used to be that if you had an audience, that meant that your audience means money. Like mm -hmm. if, if you had a television show or if you had a radio show or something like that, you had a guaranteed audience that people could advertise to. That's not the case on the internet anymore. You can have a huge audience, be super successful, but advertisers will not want to send you any money because your audience isn't worth shit. If it's not in the right demographic or the age group, like game trailers had viewers, they had hits like the Strip thumbs had hits. It, does, it just doesn't matter. At the end of the day, unless you can monetize that, you see that with Twitter. You hear this over the last week. They talked about how they're going to implement this non-chronological timeline. It was just huge kerfluffle. The reason is they have millions and millions and millions of users, but it's not translating into money. And they were going if by switching to curated content like Facebook, they'd be more easily able to target us with ads, which is more profitable. That's what really is going on is that the internet advertising economy has collapsed and you have to do all these new invasive awful shit to make money because nobody wants to pay for anything and they ad block everything. We've, we've gone over that stuff before, yeah. but the, 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 yeah, the short answer is money. The long answer is they were successful, but it didn't matter. Yeah, If, if Renegade Cut were a business that I would actually have to invest a, a sizable portion of money into, it would have failed years ago. Um, because it it only makes me a little amount of money uh, for me. Because if, if, the only, the reason it's profitable is because I don't pay much to make it happen. But, but a, a business that actually you actually have to put money into on the internet, like like paying writers and PR staff, and you know, like guys that write game companies and try to get exclusives and web developers. <clears throat> yeah, because, yep. anything that's uh, reliant very heavily on ad revenue, especially now uh is is gonna hurt for a while so so congratulations internet we are now going to be uh, uh i think exclusively entering the age of sponsored content mm. you either go to buzzfeed and you get the same stolen bullshit that everyone has or you support like individual small artisan works <laughs> and you know hopefully those people can make rent probably not <laughs> No, I was going to say, and I know that, that most of you are not going to do that, so. 
Although thanks, thank you on behalf of on behalf of my cohorts because like right here, I'm just gonna say is that uh, somebody asked me the other week because they were really enjoying Dice Funk. They were like, "Man, why can't I pay you money for Dice Funk?" And I'm like, "Because it's not my show." Okay, awesome. You know, like I work I work a regular job. I work a I, I get up at and go to work for eight o'clock in the morning and I work until four thirty in the afternoon and then I come home and and that takes care of my costs and I spend like three or four hours a week writing for Dice Funk, and then I jerk around with these two goofs for like 90 minutes when we record Word Funk. And I'm like, that's that's not cutting into my earning power. That's not cutting into like anything. You guys don't have to give me money for me to keep doing this because I am supported. I'm I'm fine. But, I mean, if, if you want to give some money to the little guys, there's there's two of them here. Just, <laughs> and we're very little. I'm just drinking vaguely in general directions that could could really use support of like a, you know even just a couple of bucks a week although i know that many of you listeners probably already do give thanks <clears throat> yeah all right yeah uh, i i do want to say thanks everybody i don't know if you, if i have addressed this but i am on a new computer in in large part thanks to the generous help of everybody on my patreon so thank you 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 know really went the extra mile for me and thank you i appreciate it um so next question, really stupid check asks, what are your favorite pieces of literature and why? Ooh. I, think, um, hmm. I got, I got, I got three that stand out for me. Um, yeah, the list prepared. Well, it's somebody asked me about this just the other week, actually. Um, just personally. Um, the first one, I like to say the big sleep because Ooh. while it's not my favorite of Raymond Chandler's novels, um, it's certainly like the most iconic, it's the most stylistic and it, it just, there's something about the way that it particularly flows as a work. Like one of the things that, that, um, I was told to do, um, not just as a training actor, but as a person was to, and be, please feel free to be a judge on how well I've done or if I've botched this. Uh, was learn how to speak properly. <clears throat> that is, I, I think, I think, I, able... sorry, go ahead, Austin. I think at this point in time, you've got it nailed. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Johnny. There was, there was a time where I, I hadn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> The advice that I was given was read aloud, was to read aloud, because it, it helps you essentially wrap your mind around the fact that sentences need to be constructed a certain way and emphasis needs to be placed in, in certain uh, uh, places. And and so for a lot of my late youth, when I was a, an aging teenager uh, and an, a young adult, I read aloud to myself. And one of my favorite works to read was Raymond Chandler's and The Big Sleep particularly. Um, so I love his prose. I'm a huge fan of, of Raymond Chandler's prose. Um, in terms of style, um, I got to go with Mervyn Peake's Gormenghast trilogy, um, which is Titus Grown, Titus Alone, and Gormenghast. It's just the 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 language peak was peak was a, a, a an amazing linguist um i don't want to get into his entire history as a as a human being but uh just his the words that he managed to put inside these books were so lush they felt like no no <laughs> he they had access to uh, like secret sexy words that we don't have no, it's just it's such a it, it's such a, a a full just lurid experience of the English language. You know, people go after the English language a lot of the time because they say it's so technical, it's so um it's 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 utilitarian. Um it it doesn't it doesn't have any romance to it. And the Gorman Gas books are my response to it because the Gorman Gas books are nuanced and detailed and emotional like it's it's so difficult to pin down exactly what qualities about the Gorman Gas trilogy make it 
as unique as it is uh, in the English language, but it's this just it's it's a it's a textured gothic fantasy that oh it just the it, the words leap right off the page um and lastly um i i i've got to say uh the road uh because the road is actually only one of the one of the only books that i've ever read twice um cormac mccarthy's the road um, his, are, his books are a lot easier to read because they don't waste any time with that punctuation business. <laughs> I well, you know, it's not in there. It's not in there for the construction or anything like that. Because Cormac McCarthy, I'm sort of like, okay, whatever. You write the way that you want, but I actually uh, really dig it. I'm just, I just think it's funny. <laughs> there's a, like the thing is, is that there's not a wasted moment in the road. We were talking earlier the episode about the merits of of editing. There is, despite all the fact that there's just like walking and talking and 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 a, almost a bunch of nothing that happens in the road, it occurred to me the first time I finished reading it, I was like, "Hang on, I don't think there was even a wasted page in there." And I yeah. I, I I rode I I I'm sorry, not rode I read a, like a a, a a another short story book called New Orleans Is Sinking right after I read it just to clear my palate, and then I went back and read the road again. And I came away the same feeling. I was just like, yeah, there's not a moment, not a moment of wasted, wasted word space in there. I, I'm a Blood Meridian fan myself. That's my favorite of his books. But The Road is pretty, pretty good. I like it mm. a lot. I, I'm, I, I'm drawn to the post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Can I say, I don't want to call your game. I've been thinking about this for a while. And I didn't want to say it on Dice Funk and like break the illusion. Oh. But you're, uh, th- we've jumped genres. We're... Like it started as like low fantasy, like mild horror elements, and now we're just in a noir story. Uh huh. It's literally Chinatown. Like a woman who isn't who she says she is gives a mission that seems did simple. Nobody, did nobody listen to me when I was describing what I had written at this goddamn campaign? Uh, I thought you said it was going to be like uh, Lovecraftian. I said I said it's it's Lovecraft meets uh, I said it's Lovecraft meets Chinatown meets Conan the Barbarian. But like even to like the, the the granular details, like the the whole um, the corruption, and then the there's a a physical mutilation, like where Jack Nicholson gets his nose cut slash what happens last episode. Like it's like I'm not I didn't want to like bring it up and like break the illusion during when it was happening. It was like this is Chinatown is shit, and I'm so into it. Well, I'm um, I'm glad you're enjoying it, but that was you know it, it was on the table from the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning, this is not something that I veered into. Mm-hmm. No, it was definitely deliberate. I just was like, oh, that's cool, but I didn't know when was the right time to bring it up, but then you brought up Raymond Chandler, so that felt like the right moment. Um, Leon. Oh, um, Johnny kind of stole mine. (laughs) (laughs) Which one? No, I I really like um, uh, Philip Marlowe, uh, Detective Stories, The Big Sleep, Farewell, My Lovely. Uh, I I read them all, but I don't remember the, the later ones as well. They're like, they're hazy in my memory. Um, little little sister is actually, I think, probably my favorite. Okay. Um, when I was young, I mean, the thing is, uh, when I think of my favorite books, I think of ones when I was young, because as I get older, I don't have as much time to sit down and and re- and read something thick. Um, but when I was young, I was very much into the Hitchhiker books, obviously. I mean, that, that I think that's come up a couple times. And, um, the weird thing about that is that I, I've tried to read all of them several times and failed. Um, by that, I mean, I, when I was young, I was like, okay, I, I'm going to read this book. Oh, it's great. I'm going to read the second one. And then for a long time, I didn't read the third. And I'm like, and then like a couple of years into it, I'm like, Oh, I should go back and read the third, but I forget what happens. So I think I'll read the first two and then the third again. So I did. And then when it was time, and years later, when it was time to read the fourth, I'm like, I don't remember what happened. So I need to read the first three again. And then, the- so this went on for years. I still haven't read Mostly Harmless. Uh, <laughs> because, the- <laughs> because I, just, I just, I keep creating this sort of cycle for myself. And I know now because, uh, although Douglas Adam passed away many years ago, um, someone else has picked up and then made a, a sixth one. So I got it. Uh, the salmon of doubt is, um, it kind of comes in halfway. Apparently he started writing it as a Dirk gently book. Yeah. 
and then decided partway through, he was like, oh, well, you know, this is actually a little bit more Hitchhikers, so... Yeah. Incidentally, have you read have you read the Dirk Gently books? No, no, I have not. Um, uh, there's, I mean, there's only two complete ones, which are um, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency and The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul. Right. But I, I actually, I always preferred those, mm. truth be told. All right. Um, trying to think of other ones that were important. Um, I will, I'll leave it there. Otherwise, I'm just going to be start naming all the novels that I like. Oh, I like the Atticus, uh, Atticus Kodiak uh, series of novels by Greg Rucka. And uh, that is it. I, I don't know those ones. That's okay. Uh, Greg Rucka, um, comic book uh, writer and also novelist, uh, does a series of uh, novels starring a bodyguard, former uh, a soldier uh, called Atticus Kodiak who runs a uh, team of bodyguards and they have a bunch of misadventures and it, it's basically noir, but not, he's not a private detective. That is, that is just about the manliest name I think I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Atticus Kodiak. Yeah. Atticus Kodiak. Yeah. It, it, it's just a ridiculous name. Uh, it's great. <laughs> uh, I really like them. I still haven't read all of them because I might as well pace myself. Um, the first one is called uh, Keeper. The second one is called Finder. The third one is called Smoker. And I haven't read the fourth one yet. Oh, I also want to mention, sorry, that I have a weak, I have a weak spot for Spider Robinson's um, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon books. Um, which, if you love puns and and like, I, I don't know how I would describe the science fiction in Callahan's Cross Time Saloon, but it's very, uh, it's rather like Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide. It's very banal. You know, like, time travelers show up at this bar in New York in the 1970s, and everybody's just kind of, like, okay with it. But the puns, my god! The puns! Okay. And um, now comes a point in time where uh, it's laid bare that we actually haven't had Austin in the call for a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, what happened? Oh, I mean, he's online. I mean, according to this, he's just... I think I, he must just have had had, had enough. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> that couldn't possibly... Oh, no, he's back. Hello. <laughs> what happened to you? Austin, I, I mean, gee, you've been here the whole time. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. My, I think my computer, like, restarted because I had some kind of update because it's new, and it was like, oh, you've set up. Where I, up, you know, restart when you're ready to apply these updates. And I was like, remind me later. And it was like, remind yeah. you now? Yeah, that's right, Austin. You're gonna have to tell me about your. Uh, your... Here we go. It's uh, yeah, my my new computer is not particularly exciting. It's basically the same thing as my old one, except for lighter, smaller, and less powerful. Oh, so all right. It's it's not super interesting. It's like the it's it's an Asus and it's a laptop that's basically like a large phone in the so sense it's a, that it's so it's a netbook basically. Or... It's a little above that. Um, but it's it's very, very light. My old one was like a cafeteria tray filled with bricks. It was a heavy duty son of a bitch. And it, that's why it lasted for like nearly a decade. Mm. This 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 one is like if it would fit in a pocket, I would carry it around in one. Mm, yeah. So Okay. All right. Did, did I, what did I miss, guys? Um, well, uh, Leon was just telling us that um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy novels were uh, were important to him, and he really likes the Atticus Kodiak books. That sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, Hitchhiker's is weird. It starts like with one tone, and as the books go on, it changes very, very like distinctly. Yeah, it, it's a strange series. It, Ooh, Discworld. I'm um, sorry. I, I'm going to stop talking about books. Okay. Let's do another top, uh, question. Well, Austin still hasn't told us about his novels yet. Did he? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my favorite My favorite two books are Where the Red Fern Grows, which is the only book that's ever made me cry. Oh. Do you guys Do you guys know about Where the Red Fern Grows? I do not, but I no. want to now because it made you cry. It's about puppies. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would do it. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Um, the other book is Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five. Okay. Which Hell a semi yes. a semi autobiographical account of the bombing of Dresden mixed in with science fiction musings on existence and time. Uh, and a hel- and a healthy dose of absurdism. And some drawings of tits. It's is a thing. And um, also one of my favorite epitaphs of all time. Uh everything was Every, everything was fine and nothing hurt. Nothing hurt. 
Yeah. It's a good, good ass book. Um, yeah. So those are those are the two that come to mind. Immediately. Sorry, no. It's everything was beautiful and nothing hurt. Ah. Do you, did you want to do yeah. some of your questions, Leon? Oh sure. Um, let's see. Stuff that's good. <laughs> you're, you're so brutal. I'm sorry. I'm just I, such a dis, such a disparaging man of all these caring and loving fans. The thing is, no, I I love my audience in all seriousness. I mean, you, I mean, not the word funk audience, but the Renegade kind of audience. Because <laughs> you guys keep. I up. I love the word funk audience. I know. Uh, you guys keep my lights on, and I appreciate it. Um, I, First I'm of just, all, I'm pretty sure that the, that Venn diagram is almost entirely overlapped. <laughs> there, there might be some of that. The point, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, every week I get a bunch of questions that are basically like, "How many words could you funk?" Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, dumb, stupid joke questions is a tradition at this point. I, I know, but it's like I'm done with that. I think um, I think you're trying to build up like a reputation. Like this is the new persona of Leon is the guy who doesn't care and has had enough of your bullshit. It's like a, <laughs> it's like your new thing. I'm sorry. No, I mean everyone does it. Um, Zach, Austin, have you ever listened to the Knife? No, I don't think have so. Have heard their song "Fancy Man"? No. No. All right. I'm just wondering here. Okay. Put that on the uh, docket. Because Leon uh, might be a fancy man now. Okay, um, Zach, who, who's a, a good guy, uh, I know. Um, so I'm not mad at him for saying it. He says, uh, "Is it legal to funk words in public?" Zach, you're great, but shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're great. You're really great, but no, stop. Um, okay, uh, whatever. Let me see. <laughs> the um, name of this also, show is also- a never-ending nightmare. He's also he's not specifying like uh, you know a region. Or anything like that. Because how words get funked in America may be very different than how they get funked in Tanzania. I heard you're not allowed I'm heard you're not allowed to uh funk any words in Michigan anymore. Um so Social yeah. commentary. Boom. I, I I hear that the Supreme Court's on that. Good. Um okay, so um Amanda says, What is your favorite drink? Non alcoholic and alcoholic. I'll start. Um, I don't drink alcohol, so my favorite beverage is pineapple juice because it's really good. But I don't have it very much because it's very sweet and therefore has lots of sugar. Um, there, there are side. Listen, Leon, I'm not going to let you escape pineapple juice being your favorite drink without jokes. Okay, there are jokes. Okay, no, go ahead. I guess. I mean, that's really good for your for your uh, future girlfriend. Come on, anybody? Fuck you guys. It's a good I don't joke. Get- I don't get it. You don't get it? No, I don't. I don't get it. I, I don't know monster. what you're talking about. You're drinking oh, pineapple oh. juice. Mi- Good. Did you get it? No. Tell me. Tell me what you mean. Okay, I'm gonna have to be the one who has to say this on this show. Drinking yeah. pineapple makes your semen taste good. Makes my semen what? What's make my semen what? Taste good. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, all right. Thing. First I'm of all, sorry. Austin. I'm sorry you had to Austin, learn it like this. No, no, yes. Austin, 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 <laughs> Austin. Listen to me very closely. There's a big difference between something tasting good and something tasting better. <laughs> listen, there's everyone has a different palate. Okay, some people, <laughs> some people find it more palatable. Some people find it good. I listen. I can only do what you know so much with what I'm told. Why did this have to happen? Why couldn't you just pick a normal drink, Leon? <laughs> I didn't know you, that I would be picking something that you know makes my makes someone's semen taste good. It's a pretty uh, widely known fact. How I, you... I, I, well, well, um, among who? No <laughs> one tells me these things. No one like no one's ever like look when my, my, my grandparents like sat me down and like taught me lessons in life. <laughs> There he says, and Leon, what you want to do uh, is drink a lot of pineapple juice before a big date, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's like, it's like I don't. I mean, like I, I don't pop up, but, but but okay. I don't know. That seems like pretty common knowledge. But yeah, whatever. I, like, I, I drink pineapple juice all the time. No one's ever like finished with me and be like, nice. <laughs> This is taking a turn. 
<laughs> no one's ever no one's ever like winked at me and said vitamin C. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Okay. No. Nope, no. Nope. <laughs> have we finally killed Johnny? It okay. works. And apparently, it works. Anyway, look, I have a very lower than average sex drive, so uh, maybe I just don't. Um, I don't talk about this kind of thing very much. I <laughs> guess so. Maybe that's why I don't know. Um, but uh, I didn't know. Anyway, we had a real question by uh, Amanda, uh, and I, I was done with mine. I am so done. <laughs> I am so done with mine, Austin. Um, what what makes your dick taste good in terms of drinks? <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say the real answer. Favorite? I don't drink alcohol either. My favorite drink is milkshakes. I just, it's all all the all the joy of eating ice cream, but with none of that spoon business. Just get up in there. Is Johnny back? Did we really scare him off? No, we we killed him. Uh, <laughs> Johnny's the only one here who drinks alcohol, so he's like the only person who can answer both parts of this question. Okay. But we um, destroyed him. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that scandalous. We're all adults. I know. Okay, but... okay, okay, I'm back. Johnny, what is your favorite non-alcoholic and alcoholic drink? Johnny, how are you so scandalized? You just need to get your cum game right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not scandalized, son, and my cum game is tight, so... <laughs> Don't you fucking worry about me. Just because I don't use pineapple doesn't mean that I'm not sorted, all right? Holy shit. (laughs) Oh, oh, this is going on the best of highlight reel for show. So, um, non-alcoholic drinks, I actually, honestly, don't drink a lot apart from water, to tell you the truth. Um, I, I don't drink, I don't drink a lot of soda. Um, yeah, you gotta I, cut I, that shit out. That's just a fucking million calories for no reason. Forever. I do drink skim milk, um, soda. mainly because, mainly I drink, uh, mainly I drink the skim milk because, uh, it's a good source of protein. Um, and when I do... You know what else is a good source of protein? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Austin, you can rarely get it in, like, pints. <laughs> You've never dated me then, Johnny. <laughs> More is the pity, Mr. Yorsky. More is the pity. I'm really sorry to everyone who came to hear about video games or whatever. <laughs> oh, um, this fire hose is out. Okay. So, so like, I'll, I'll drink, you know, like I'll drink uh, uh, a glass of milk probably like two or three times a day, skim milk. Um, uh, but I got to say that non-alcoholic, probably the drink that I enjoy the most um is espresso um and i'm down to well i mean uh, yeah like i don't i don't drink a lot of brew coffee like like filter brew coffee or anything like that but i'm i'm a sucker for a double espresso it's just it's rich it's thick it's bitter um like something else in this world that you're never gonna be able to come back and joke up (laughs) yeah this is just how we have to live our lives now hmm all right. Um, as, far as, as far as alcoholic drinks go, yeah. Um, I really like Manhattans. Um, I really like old fashions. Um, I make both of those with bourbon, though. Um, I, if if we're just talking like uh, pure alcohol, or like like just a drink by itself, um, I'll take red wine or scotch. Um. I mean, I recognize all these words from Mad Men, but I don't actually know what they mean. Um, a, a good old-fashioned, um, I will take um, two ounces of bourbon, a uh, double shot of bourbon. Um, well, first of all, what you want to do is... You want <laughs> oh, God, to, now oh, it's a recipe. No, first of all, what you want to do is you want to take about a tablespoon of sugar, drop it in the bottom of a glass, um, add about 10 or 12 shakes of bitters. I like to use Angostura bitters, and then mottle that in the bottom of the glass, which basically means crush it. Crush it up so that um, it absorbs all the flavor better. You get better surface area. Um, and then add a dash of soda water to it. Uh, swirl it around in the glass so that the edges of the glass are covered. Add your two ounces of bourbon uh, and then um, usually a fruit garnish. Uh, cherries are commonly used, but I'm actually, like, weirdly enough, a fan of frozen pineapple. Um 
and stir that up. There you go. That's an old fashioned. Um, a Manhattan is actually involves a shaker. Um, it depends on whether or not you you want to use dry or sweet vermouth. There's the perfect Manhattan, which uses half and half of each. So that would be two ounces of bourbon, half an ounce of sweet vermouth, half an ounce of dry vermouth. Shake that up, um, zest it with a little bit of orange peel, and then um, take that peel, make a corkscrew out of it, garnish in the glass. You can also add other fruit to the Manhattan. It was invented in that realm of cocktails back in the 1960s where, like, everything had to have a piece of fruit in it to be kind of like haute couture. That sounds um, really complicated, Johnny. Have you heard of milkshakes? I I have, and actually I just got a, a new blender, um, and, and I'm making some pretty mad uh, vodka milkshakes lately. Um, <laughs> milkshakes are perfectly good by themselves. You don't got to add shit to them. Yeah, I know you don't have to, but you can. <sighs> Leon, save us. Uh, oh, yeah, I have more questions. Um, anyway, I have a big drink list, and I'm good at making most of them. Okay. But those are my favorites. Um, <laughs> in a, a terrible twist of fate, um, Jess, our, our friend from Dice Funk. <laughs> <laughs> without any knowledge of what we were talking about earlier <laughs> says what do each of you of you taste like <laughs> pineapple <laughs> um uh, sorry um that's as far as we can go with that lightly um, salted <laughs> i'm i'm going to go ahead and say potential unrealized okay um <laughs> Where so, you're like, you like take your first like bite of something, and you're like, oh, I wish they'd done more with this. <laughs> uh, the little ng that could says, uh, have you ever walked out on a movie? If not, which one were you most tempted to abandon? Um, if I if I really like, go to the theater, like, and I drive out and pay, I'm not leaving even <laughs> if I hate it because Transformers I- two. I uh I feel like I I pay I, for a service. I, right, right. I paid for the service and even if I don't like it, I just hate the idea of wasting money. Um but uh I don't I, like 95% of the movies I watch, I watch at home even though I I enjoy going to the movie theater. But I watch a lot of movies and most movies are released by now and on, on home video. So I watch them there. Uh there are movies I have just stopped watching because I thought they were horrendous. Um so uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I can think of one off the top of my head besides the ridiculous six. Um, but that, yeah, I mean, sometimes I turn them off, but I, never, I don't think I've ever stormed out of a movie theater. I sat through Jupiter Ascending, even though I literally had a headache and I, I, I was like in genuine pain during it. And not just because it was bad, but because I was having a bad day. Um, but I sat through the whole thing because I paid for it and that's how I am. Um I don't Johnny. think that's. I don't think that's weird. I don't. You pay for something, you're gonna get it, and then you can be like, "Well, that wasn't good," but you're not gonna just like leave. That's weird. That's. I, I've never done that, but yeah, like I've turned off movies. A couple. Anchorman Two is the last I remember, but even then, like I sat through Adam Sandler's going overboard. So, <laughs> Christ on a cracker. Yeah. All right. Um. Let me do one more, and uh, before before we go, and. I'm going to try to pick a good one, but that's hard. Because <laughs> they're all so good. They're good, also ones, good. Leon? Yeah. <laughs> um, King Fluffles. This is kind of interesting. I don't have an immediate answer to it, uh, which is a shame, but it says, given any one major cosmic change, what parallel alternate universe would you want to visit or live in? Like, basically, you know, in a very, um, what if Hitler won? Kind of, you know, like if something in history changed, what what alternate uh, universe would you like to live in? Um, by the way, not the one where Hitler won. Uh, I just, I just that, that that came to mind because that's a lot of alternate history uh, sci-fi comes from. Um, <laughs> I want I want to live in an alternate universe where birds have like big arms, like big muscular arms instead of wings, and they just run around punching shit. <laughs> Everything else is exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, for, uh, Austin, I feel like if that were changed, everything else would change too. Butterfly not, effect. Yeah, right. I mean, we we would like every day would be a nightmare. Because uh, <laughs> in like ye olden times, a bird would have punched you know 
Winston Churchill to death, and then he never would have done whatever he did. No one knows. It's a mystery. (laughs) Uh, Johnny, do you have an answer to this very unusual, but uh, at least not boring question? No, I I mean, I really do, but that's a question whether or not you want the fun answer or the real answer. Uh, Fun answer. Fun answer first. Overall fun answer. Okay, fun answer first. Fun answer first will say, um, I would like to... I would like to live in an alternate dimension where, um, <clears throat> where the the there's gonna be a lot of long pauses edited no, out. Of this no, no, no. I like, I like, I really, I would really like to, I would really like to see an alternate dimension where, like, yesterday, we're talking like fucking yesterday, the moon landing was like demonstrably proven to be fake. <laughs> <laughs> Like that would just I'd like that would light me up. I would laugh my ass off. I would like like the, I guess my real answer would be a, a universe in which space travel were not insurmountably difficult and expensive. Like the the shit we have right now, just our solar su- system is not conducive to like escape <laughs> or like alternate habitation. We're just kind of yeah. Stuck. But that, uh, Austin, that's like that's like future sci-fi alternate reality shit. That's like. I'd love to live in an alternate reality where they discovered how to live forever and jump around in different dimensions so I could see all the multi-dimensions. That's like wishing for more wishes. Exactly. Right. It's, it's, it's bullshit. Uh, the real answer is, of course, um, I would love to see my father alive still. I don't have a good one. And that's a shame. I've been thinking. Um, there, what, there was don't, you be, don't you want to be the great American novelist, Leon? Yeah, that's 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 more like time travel, like like stealing everyone's ideas and then going back to like 1970 and like doing all the great 80s and 90s novels. That, Wait, that, you would <laughs> steal like if you, if it's just a money making thing, they just rob like use your time travel powers to rob banks or yeah. Like... But, I, but I also want to be famous. Thank Why you. being famous would be the worst? Oh God, um, what... you hate dealing with <laughs> yeah, randos he could be when you ask questions things, on your just... podcast. Look, no. He could, um, he could be reclusive famous, and that's not the same as being famous. That's that's like being like, I'm incredibly talented, and everybody loves me, but leave me alone because I'm a genius. Mm. Yeah, I, I could, you know, JD Salinger it. Um, I wouldn't though. I'd be just walking around the street saying, "It's me." No, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I have a good uh, answer to this uh, particular question. There was an episode of Sliders uh, in which uh, they went to an alternate uh, Earth. And they were worried that they had traveled into the future, but that wasn't a thing that the the device would normally do. And then they realized that the Earth in this uh, dimension just turned like in a like a tiniest tiniest fraction a bit faster, and that the, the universe just moved slightly faster. And then they went into the future, not the real future. It just seemed like it, um, and that was cool. Uh, so I would like to uh, go into an alternate universe where everyone's just kind of chilled out and stopped being an asshole to people. I feel like the, the in the, the era of time, things get better uh, in the world. So uh, you want to go to Brave New World Land? I, I, I want to go... That's a lot more involved. It sounds like he just wants an alternate universe where people have like lower uh, hormone levels. So they're I'm just, just saying that everybody's doped up in Brave New World. Yeah, I was saying but that, that's like an entire like society built on like sterilization and fetal alcohol syndrome and shit. Like that's complicated and like <laughs> fascist. I think he wants something a little low key. <laughs> right. I, I, I basically uh, would like to visit an alternate dimension where everyone's not an asshole. Uh, that's, that's, that's sort of what I mean. Uh, Leon, as a firm believer in multiverse theory, um, I think I got bad news for you. That one doesn't look like it's going to be coming round. (laughs) Oh, well, you know, look, I'll keep keep looking for you. I spent a lot of time thinking about the multi-universe thing, right? And it seems like people are always like, oh, you know, one universe, Hitler, one, one universe, like, birds have muscle arms but no one ever thinks like what if in one universe a single electron hundreds of millions of light years from the earth spin spins in a different direction like just a, the tiniest oh. thing i mean mathematically speaking it's a certainty that's what i'm saying though like i, I bet the, if if that's true then there are just like trillions of trash universes that are basically exactly the same as our shitty one that's yeah, really depressing I mean, uh, you guys have watched Rick and Morty, the um, the the uh, episode where they're watching TV, uh-huh. the improv like, episode. 
and it's and it's just like you know click and it's like oh come on down to to real fake doors are you sick and tired of your doors going places well come on down here because look at this this one doesn't open and this this one does oh it's a wall that was a really good impression it was that was excellent impression of that one guy from that one scene uh, okay. Not that um, one guy from that one scene. That's Justin Roiland. He does the voice for Rick and Morty and, and also, everyone. Uh, that one guy from that one scene. Yeah. Um. I, I I have one more question, and it's the Star Trek one. Um. Uh. Brian Fuller said he'd be down for Captain Angela Bassett and First Officer Rosario Dawson. Mm-hmm. Who's you? Who's your dream team? The catch is you can't pick white men. Now, here's the thing. Are I we talking that... just Captain and Captain and First Officer here? Well, well, we, you can pick as many as you want, but I would just go with Captain first. Because, Leon, if we're going to go for, like, okay, this is the diverse Star Trek, I think what you do is you invert the original. Instead of having it all white people and then Ahura, you have all people of color and then one, like, white guy's secretary. You have to have the token white. <laughs> and then, he, I like, like, you know... To balance it out, I think that would be funny. Get like a Michael Sarah or somebody like really <laughs> dumb. I, uh, and, I'm I'm gonna steal this. Uh, I I was I was thinking that Angela Bassett would be cool too, and then someone said no, Captain Jillian Anderson, and I said yeah. So that <laughs> that's that would be my that would be my captain. Also, she would have to be gay because again, I feel like that's a thing that should be a thing. <laughs> um, and that's it. And that that's that that is my that is my pick for captain. I want I want Idris Elba in everything. I feel like that's a theme of this show. But I would like Idris Elba in everything, including Star Trek. He can he can get in on that. Yeah, Johnny. Mm. Johnny hasn't even thought about this. I was so thrilled with Brian Fuller that I I wasn't like. Well, the thing is, I mean, he sometimes he you know uh, showrunners reuse different actors. So maybe you know he'll he'll say, "Hey, Lawrence Fishburne, do you want to be captain of the new Enterprise?" And it'll be like, sure. I'd be down as hell on that. That'd be sweet. That'd be yeah, cool. that that would work. That would work. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I just keep going over it in my head that I want it to be perfect. I don't even want to like. Oh God, I feel like I'm copping out so bad. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm 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 looking at my movie collection right now. Okay. Mm. And by the way, the one white character needs to be played by Jeffrey Combs. And that's it. Oh, as always, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. like that's that's. I can only see half of my movie collection from here, and that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh no! I like. I'm seriously. I'm just. I'm like. I'm reaching this point in time where I'm like, no, 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 no. It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Johnny, if you don't answer quickly, I'm gonna say your answer was Shia LaBeouf. But he's a white male. Yeah, he can be the white guy. The, I, I, I've instituted this rule. One white guy for Star Trek now, forever. No, 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 no. I'm trying to, no. The thing is, I'm trying to think of, like, TV actors, because, like, I think it would be really dope if Charlize Theron <laughs> was in it. Because after Mad Max Fury Road, I just want her to kick in dudes' faces forever. Well, I feel like, uh, you know, movie actors and TV actors have kind of, like, there, there is a lot of overlap. I mean, I like for example, Brian Fuller mentioned Rosario Dawson, who kind of does both now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's more now than the, there used to be, but I, I just don't know if that's a realistic one. At least, doesn't matter. This is our hypothetical bullshit, so who cares? Right. I mean, you could say Brad Pitt, but <laughs> it's like I no. don't know if I'd want that. Maybe as like a villain one week. Oh my God, Brad Pitt as the principal villain of the new Star Trek series? I'd be all over that. All right, I I think I'd like to see Elizabeth Moss. Okay. From Mad Men, she she's Peggy. She plays Peggy. Oh, okay. Um, that would be really great, and I think Tandy Newton as well. Yeah, Chronicles of Riddick, twenty twelve, yeah, um, so Crash. Um, yeah. So so I like Elizabeth Moss and Tandy Newton. I think I'd be I'd be happy to see. Okay. Yeah. So I think what the f- point we're getting at here is Star Trek is super exciting again because they actually got someone talented to work on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically. Sorry, J.J. Abrams. Not sorry. Your he's, movies. Your movies weren't good. I, this the first one was okay. 
this is no this is this is the thing that somebody actually I got into a conversation with somebody the other the other week and I was like I was forced to reconcile like recognize that this is the truth. JJ Abrams might be a hack. <laughs> no, no he, a really, his movies are bad. But he's a but he's a really good one. I don't know. I feel like he's made enough good movies that we can't really shit on him. I mean Oh yeah, Leon, like what? Uh The Force Awakens. Okay, so Star Wars, which somebody yeah. else created. All right, what else? I'm not saying, I'm not saying he, he, he had not, look, everything's a, uh, everything's a remix now. Yeah, but, but, but no, but he very explicitly does almost entirely remixes. Okay. okay. Hold on. Let me, let me. Super 8 was not an intellectual property beforehand. I gotta say though, I, I, I may have overgeneralized because he did Mission Impossible 3, which is my favorite of those movies. Philip Seymour Hoffman kills it in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, but do you love J.J. Abrams or do you love Philip Seymour Hoffman? I mean, okay, he didn't. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been as good with a bad director. Yeah, this he didn't get thing. in Hoffman's he's way. A, he's a good director. He is a good director. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like you know. Uh, I'm not disparaging his technical or artistic skill behind the camera. I'm. I'm merely suggesting that it's like all he's been really, really good at is retooling other people's creative properties. Which is fine. That's a thing you can be good at. Tarantino is good at remixing other people's <laughs> shit. Um, I do want to say, though, speaking of Mission Impossible, how's this strike, you guys? What? Captain Lawrence Fishburne. I, I, I think I just said I'm, that. I'm, I'm, no, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure Austin just said that. I am Austin. Hello. No, I mean, I just said that. No, you said he'd be in it, but how does the captain, like, in right. charge? Yeah. That's, I, like, guys, how are we not more excited about that idea? <laughs> I could do with that, but I mean, you already said Idris Elba, and I'm like, yeah. That that was good, too, but I I don't know. Now I'm on this new thought. I get I get easily distracted by thoughts, guys. I'm on all of these thoughts. Simultaneously? How do you do that? Wait, let's put all of our picks together, guys? And then, and then have Shia LaBeouf come in as a red shirt for one episode. <laughs> I like... I like the idea of us assembling this list and then mailing it off to Brian Fuller. And, <laughs> and being Dear like, Listen. Mr. Fuller, I'm we, sure you've heard of us. We're from the internet. We did all the good work for you. Yes. So this episode, I have no idea how long it's gone on for. Too much? How long have you guys got? Too much. Um, anything, Too much. You guys, anything you guys want to say before we go? <sighs> Pretty much always. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, I have. I didn't get to like half the questions. I'm sorry. Yeah, that that's literally every week. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that's see. That's why I have to pick and choose mine very carefully. See, uh, you, you you're like, oh, yeah, but <laughs> is that is that how I do? <laughs> exactly like that. It's an incredible impression, as I am known for doing that. Um. All right, I have nothing more uh, to add at this time. Uh, any last words? If crabs are your friend, why don't they talk back to you? Huh? What are you... Listen, I'm not even going to question Johnny's shit anymore. It looks like there's a new uh, generation of Pokemon coming out. I'm pretty excited about that. That's the thing. Guys. Austin, I'm, I'm really waiting for you to sell me on Pokemon. <sighs> They're adorable, and you collect them. <laughs> and then you make them fight! Yeah. You vicious monster. Yeah. It's listen, that the the whole cockfighting angle is like that stopped being funny in like the mid nineties. It's not it's not like a vicious competition. It's adorable. I'm gonna go watch American Crime Story, The People vs. OJ Simpson. Ooh, uh, have you been watching that or are you just starting? No, I, I watched the first episode and the second episode uh aired and now I, I need to watch it. Did he do it? <laughs> This this show is um see if the show had like balls it would just open with OJ <laughs> just hacking the shit out of someone but instead they're playing it like as if it were a murder mystery that we all didn't know so um there's that uh John Travolta is in it and his eyebrows are amazing um. Uh, we'll talk. I'll 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 report about this when once I'm a few episodes in. But I, I I only have like initial impressions at this point, and that's that it's not a good show. But I'm gonna keep watching it. Quick X Files recap. Uh, Leon, um, uh, what episode are you on? <laughs> oh, um, gosh, where am I? Hold on, hold on. 
This episode's gonna need like half of it cut out for it to be even reasonably oh. sized. Uh, I'm on. I'm about to start episode 16 of season two. Okay, all right. For a second there, I thought that was like really eerie because I'm about to start episode 16 of season three. No, no, you're you're gonna be way ahead of me. I just I don't have time for stuff. Um, Neither do I. What makes you think yeah. I have time for stuff? I, all right, I, you you must have more, <laughs> you must have somehow more than me if you're on season three. He's just uh, no, more I, dedicated, I just... Leon. He doesn't take this as a joke. <laughs> Puts in the work. Okay, that's fair. All right, I need to go. Bye. Bye. I love you guys. I love you too. Bye. Bye.